today's webinar, I'd like to introduce David Pollitt, Director of Strategic Accounts and Doug Fight, Director of Solutions Engineering. And with that, Dave, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you. And thank you all for joining. Um, the topic of today's webinar is unlock the potential of your customer data with onboarding and segmentation. Um, and I think that that is uh, a topic that is on the forefront of the minds of a lot of marketers today, which is how do I connect my offline and my online marketing? How do I digitize my customers so that I can target them more efficiently, so that I can suppress recent converters, and ultimately so that I can deliver a relevant experience to customer and prospects across all of my channels? Hopefully today we can describe the general process um, by which that occurs with us and, and frankly with others in the space. Um, and then we're going to give you a little bit insight into it, you know, the differences uh, in NewStar's platform and the ways in which we do it that we think are, uh, are most salient specifically for today is when it comes to the analysis of that file, the segmentation, and the personalization of the experience, not just simply the targeting of an offline file. You know, as we move into it, um, I'm not sure I'd like to imagine a world. Imagine a world where uh, there's there's uh, no world hunger, maybe, but yeah, I'm not sure sure we're solving the world's problems. But what we are doing here today is, I think, solving a very big marketing problem, in it, and that is how do you take your offline customer insights, your analytics, your segmentation, your response models, all of that, and how do you bring that into an online environment? And essentially what we're going to describe to you is a process where you can literally take all of your offline data, you can bring it into an online environment, you can do it in a way that is privacy secure and non-personally identifiable, and you can target your customers and prospects online based on stuff you know about them offline. Um, we're going to describe a way that not only can you go out and very prescriptively go out and target your customers and prospects, those lists that you have offline, but also how you can close the loop and personalize experiences across all of your channels. Um, and lastly, we're going to talk to you about the importance when you select somebody to help you with this, about doing it in a way that helps you achieve maximum scale, achieve maximum accuracy, and continually and perpetually optimize and refine the targeting of that file. So it's not just take a file and target it, um, without any closed loop or optimization of, of the experience for your customers and prospects that you're targeting. To do this, what you need and what we would argue is it begins with marketing not to cookies but marketing to people. If you think about onboarding in the space today, there are solutions out there right now today where essentially you can take an offline list of your customers or an offline list of prospects whatever sort of offline list you have of identities that you want to deliver a message to, and you can very quickly convert those into cookies so that you can buy ad impressions against those users out in programmatic media or across publisher websites where the publishers have some kind of subscription data that enables them to target those offline identities. And that's a pretty useful piece of functionality, but it's really just a line item in the media buy when you do it that way. What's different about Newstar and what we do is we take those lists, we take that offline identity, and we onboard it into an identity engine. And essentially what the identity engine is, is the identity engine is every single household in the U.S. and every single 18 plus individual in the U.S. And associated with those is every fractional identifier. It's kind of a mouthful, but what I mean by a fractional identifier is their name, their address, their mobile phone number, their landline, IP addresses associated with that identity, cookies, and even most recently device IDs for the uh, ever-elusive mobile uh, media targeting where you really aren't allowed to use cookies so you have to have a device ID to make that match. Our identity engine brings all of that together and it says this is Doug Fight and if all you have for Doug Fight, for example, is you know that he gave his mobile phone number in store when he made a transaction at your retail storefront that our identity engine can actually convert that into Doug's identity and then it can push it out to cookies. 
That's very different from saying, send me a list of users and let me just map them back to cookies. And it's different for a couple of reasons. One is it brings a lot more scale. So all too often we talk to brands who are looking to quote unquote onboard their offline identities and target them online. And what we hear is, hey listen, the, the digital onboarders that we have or that we've worked with, they do really well when I have this complete customer data set. Or I have every bit of information about this customer available and I can send that over to them. But if you reel back to that example that I just gave, where all I have is a mobile phone number and a transaction in an in-store, all of the solutions in market other than Newstar really tend to start to fall down here. Because almost every single one of them uses email as the way that they link offline to online. Our identity engine, which is a solution we've had in market and been building out for now 15 years, assembles every single fractional identifier. And so it marries that, in this example, that offline transaction where the only identifier they have is not even a name or an address, but just a mobile phone. It brings that in and it links it in and it makes it then extensible for targeting across cookies, device IDs, and IP address. Um, as importantly, that linkage enables ongoing optimization. With Newstar, again, what you're doing is you're onboarding to that offline identity. Then you're digitizing to cookies, IP address, and, and device ID. And the reason I keep stating that um, is because what it means is as, in this example, Doug Fight goes into your store the next day and converts as a result of an ad that he saw online yesterday, you can continue to feed those insights in to the file that you're onboarding, and now you can very quickly move him from, say, a targeting, targeting a message to suppressing a specific piece of creative or a specific offer to Doug. It's closing the loop. It's providing a linkage between your online and your offline, and that all resolves around having this one identity engine that allows you to continually feed in a stream of online and offline data, make it all available for analysis, optimization, and tactical things like targeting and suppression. Um, the other critical thing about this is even before you go live, before you start to lurk, look for the feed of data on what occurred within your media campaign, or you look for subsequent transactions that occur offline, you can do some analysis of the file that you've onboarded right now today. So before you push that file live out in the media, what you're going to learn, and we're going to talk about next slide, is the ability to actually take that file in, which again, we've onboarded to an offline identity before we convert it into things like cookies, IP address, and device ID, bring in any other data you have about that offline identity. So for a bank, it might be product portfolio or balance tiers. For a retailer, it might be some kind of RFM flag. But any information that's salient to you for the targeting of your customers, that comes into this platform along with all of the identities. We commingle that with roughly 16,000 attributes that Newstar maintains. And once you bring those together into one platform, you can do a lot of interesting things with that file before you actually start to target it. So first and foremost is you can analyze the file that you've onboarded. You can do segmentation of it. You can do correlations with other conversions or other product interests that, that these users have expressed through the purchases that they've made in the past. You can do a segmentation schema. You can match the right message or the right creative to the segments within that file that you're onboarding. You can value the segments. And this is really important. When you go into a platform, you may see, hey, I have 20 million people and I want to target this message to. But you may learn of those 20 million, these 7 million look really likely to respond. Well, now imagine a world where you could actually up the frequency against that file, up the bidding in programmatic media, deploy a, more, a, a higher value offer within your media. There's a lot that you can do with this intermediary step where because we onboard to an offline identity, you can do this analysis before you then push those identities out into cookies and out into device IDs, and out into IP addresses, depending on which way you elect to digitize your offline file. All right. Sorry, y'all. Technical error. So, 
With that said, what's the process? So the first thing that you do when you come to NewStar is you take all of your offline CRM data. And again, offline CRM data is not just your very clean customer database. That could be all of the data that you have that isn't linked well to identities. It could be transactions that are only associated with a mobile phone. It could be a partial form that was completed on your website where all you've gotten is an email address or a name and address. All of the information that you have from an offline, in the offline world that you would like to link to identities. You pass in any, again, any segment or any flags that you'd like to include in that. Again, the examples I've used are, you know, account product portfolio, balance tiers for financial services, RFM metrics for retailers, and you send all of that over to us. We strip out all of the personally identifiable information, and then we provide you with a platform where you can do a lot of analysis of those files. The first part of the analysis is really trying to get a propensity model assigned. Which people within that file are most likely to respond to this creative? Um, or is there different creative I should be showing to different members within this file? Secondarily, we start to help you value those segments so you can determine the optimal frequency and how hard you want to try within programmatic media, translation, how high you want to bid to reach each of those discrete segments within the file that you're onboarding. And lastly, what we're going to show you, and I haven't seen this anywhere else, is we, is we then expose to you, here's all of the media partners that you can go out and target. And we show you their reach across this file. So you start to actually optimize the media plan before you push it out. And you start to select the appropriate media partners to target the different segments within this file or the whole file if that's the way that you elect to go. Lastly, coming back to that identity engine, we take all those fractional identifiers and we take all of that data offline and all of, it, all of the interactions that are occurring online, and we continue to feed that in back to those offline identities. So once you push that file live, we start to look at who are you reaching, who haven't you reached on that file, what, what level of frequency are you reaching specific users, and what users are responding best. This, is, this beckons back to a direct mail world where you don't just drop a list and look at the response, you look at the specific people who are responding. In this, in this instance, it's non-person identifiable. You look at the specific identities, but you start to refine and optimize. And with that identity engine, the conversion can occur offline or it can occur online. But it's all getting closed back down to this one data repository that enables you not just to reach the people on an offline list, but to track what happens subsequently so that you continually can optimize and refine the messaging, the targeting that you're pushing up against that list. So onboarding again before we get into uh, the, the specifics of our platform. Onboarding with Newstar to summarize is one, take and activate all of your offline customer and prospect data. Make it available for targeting online. Two, associate it with an offline identity first so that you can analyze that file and so that that linkage is there when, once the file has been pushed so that you can actually optimize the delivery of that file, you can look at the people who respond, you can start to target more intelligently, you can even build lookalikes off of that file based on the response, ultimately closing the loop between the targeting and the actual response. Um, with that said, I want to hand it over to Doug Fight, who will walk you through some shots of our screens and uh, hopefully give you guys a good sense of what the, the true capabilities are within this platform. Great. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, pleasure to be speaking with everyone this afternoon. Uh, as Dave alluded to, um, what I'm going to do is take, you, take everybody through a uh, quote-unquote real-world scenario with some data that we already have in-house of how a uh, marketer uh, might use Platform One. Um, this isn't uh, a specific client's data. This is based off of syndicated data, so no fear we're not exposing uh, a client's data here. But what we're looking at um, here is the, the Platform One 
home screen. Actually, uh, recently launched yesterday a new UI. But the use case here is, let's say we are uh, Chick-fil-A, and we have a loyalty program with just email addresses uh, or just phone numbers or a single fractional identifier, as Dave alluded to, for uh, you know a, a sample of our most loyal customers. In this instance, it was about 11 million or so homes that had, that had indicated they have a propensity to uh, be Chick-fil-A customers. So that file is loaded into this uh, platform and analyzed through the lens of both the identity layer that Dave spoke of as well as the 16,000 attributes to create um, actionable insights and audiences that can be targeted uh, in both online and offline channels as well as direct audiences off of that, uh, you know, in this case, 11 million or so uh, household file. So the first thing that happens when that file is loaded into our platform is it's viewed through the lens, well, it's matched against our offline identities. The PII is thrown away, and we look at each identity through the lens of our 172 microsegments. This is what we call our Element 1 Marketing Analytics Framework. It's the same segments that are uh, in the Ad Advisor uh, uh, data platform, for those of you on the phone who are familiar with that. But we take that file, uh, associate each identity into one of those 172 microsegments, and look at it across that landscape relative to the size of those segments within the United States. Very quickly, each segment is defined based on six core demo demographic attributes, the household income, the age of the head of household, whether they own a home, have children present in the home, not simply have children, but have a child living with them in the home, and then a combination of urbanicity and cost of living to get to the fact that $100,000 in New York is very different from $100,000 in Des Moines, Iowa. So trust me, across the bottom, across this screen, there are 172 blue bars. That represents this 11 million uh, customer record for Chick-fil-A that we loaded up. The green, as a contrast, is against the syndicated data set that we have for folks that are likely to have eaten at a McDonald's. So as you can tell, lots of granularity, lots of power here, lots of things you can do. But through the lens of 172, it's not quite as interesting. There's a lot you could do with it, but you don't see a lot of correlation between these two um, uh, profiles here. So what we can then do is uh, take a look at it through a slightly different lens, which is which are the uh, household customer segments that index high towards one of our uh, uh, biggest competitors, which if we are Chick-fil-A, uh, would, would be McDonald's. Um, you could do it against the lens of uh, all these, uh, all the other attributes that we have within the platform, uh, but for this given use case, it seems to make a lot of sense to use McDonald's. So what we have here is a, uh, you know, a quadrant of uh, these two profiles, where the upper right is folks that have a high propensity to be both Chick-fil-A and McDonald's customers. We call that the opportunity audience there, which is the, I believe it's the fifth row down on the chart. And then the bottom right is folks that have a high propensity to be Chick-fil-A customers, but not McDonald's customers. So again, in this uh, you know, somewhat simple use case, this would be the core Chick-fil-A audience that you would want to go after relative to a lookalike model or some sort of audience expansion play. You've given us 11 million of your best customers. How can we analyze those customers, look at them through the lens of a bunch of other attributes, and then find a niche audience to go after? So that's this what we call the core audience here. It's about, uh, I think it's about four and a half or four million or so, 4.9 million uh, households in the United States. You can take a look at their average income, uh, which is about $118,000, the head of households, 46, et cetera, et cetera. You can see uh, a whole host of attributes about them. That is interesting, but that is a very broad swath of uh, consumers in the U.S. So we would then double-click on that audience and take a look at what we can learn within that group. So within that group, there's actually three distinct audiences. There's a set of core affluent families that make about $150,000 a year. 80% of these households have kids living in the household. 
The vast majority of them, about 80% or so, own their own homes. And they are going to behave very differently and or they're going to respond very differently to creative than a, the other two groups, which is a more uh, middle income group and then a set of affluent, uh, what we're calling empty nesters here. They're uh, almost 50 years old. They tend to own their homes but not have children. So while this entire audience represents what appears to be a core audience for Chick-fil-A, to really get at effective marketing, you want to then vary the creative across these three groups. So from within those groups, what we can do is build a given persona, and we'll take a look at the core uh, affluent families group, and uh, you know, beyond just those core demographic attributes that you see across the top, you can begin to learn more about those customers for creative optimization. Everything from what other types of stores do they tend to shop at, what restaurants, other restaurants do they um, eat at, do they shop at Target versus Walmart, Dick Sporting Goods versus the Sports Authority, uh, you know, what, what media do they consume, what TV shows do they watch, what newspapers do they read, what radio stations do they listen to, and then a, a, a set of uh, lifestyle attributes. Do they tend to have graduate degrees or undergraduate degrees? Are they um, trade workers or professional management career folks? Do they own their homes? Have they refinanced their homes recently? Uh, voting patterns. What types of vehicles do they own? What types of technology is in the house? So again, the idea here is beyond just finding, telling me which um, households and devices uh, associated with those households represent my best customers, further segmenting in so that we can optimize creative and make sure all of the marketing dollars that uh, our clients are spending are impactful. So now that we've found that core audience that we go after, the next step is where can I reach these folks within the digital ecosystem? So that comes in, in two varieties, as, as Dave alluded to. The top left is what we'll call lookalike models or audience expansion, whatever term you want to use. So this is that Chick-fil-A core um, affluent families group that we built. Um, you're looking at this through the lens of what we call our audience planner. Now that that audience is, has been built, where can I reach them? So this roughly 4.9 million households in the United States equates to uh, 17.9 million device IDs that we have associated with these households via a, a, a Delphic and in-app advertising platform, 139 million cookies within media mass that have, been, that have been associated to these households, just shy of 23 million cookies within videology. So again, mobile, display, uh, video across all of these channels. This represents the uh, you know, sort of digital reach that one can get against this specific audience that we've already created a tailored set of creative that should be impactful for this audience. And then uh, the, the bottom right, oh, so one, one other thing to note there is this also gives you a sense of where can I get the best scale across these digital channels uh, to, to reach these folks. Do I want to use uh, media math or turn? Do I want to use videology? or Adapt TV, and which mobile provider might I be able to, to, to reach those folks on as well. And then the bottom right is our uh, a new UI that we're creating for the CRM on, for the direct uh, CRM file targeting. So these 11 million uh, customers that Chick-fil-A has provided to us as a file, where can I reach those 11 million across which media partners? So uh, again, this right now is a, is a, is a, with some sample data, but in this instance, this one attribute within, within that file, which may have been uh, you know, dollars spent or some of the um, vertical specific attributes that Dave alluded to, you can figure out how much scale you have across them. In this instance, 2.67 million unique cookies across a variety of media partners. You can double click on the media partners, no pun intended, and figure out where you can reach those, um, uh, that audience across those media partners and begin to set out a media plan that is impactful and can be measured uh, based on a relatively uh, thin set of data that may have just been email addresses and how frequently someone has visited a Chick-fil-A store, phone numbers and the last time somebody was at a Chick-fil-A store, or some other set of attributes. 
Uh, you know, again, the idea is taking that one file, being able to plan who to reach, figure out where to target them, and then uh, eventually, through onboarding that file through us, be able to close the loop with our measurement capabilities as well. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll hand it back to Dave. Great. So, you know, this, is, this brings us to the conclusion of our webinar. I wanted to remind all of you that uh, we are following up on this on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to uh, essentially cover the media optimization and insights that you can garner as a result of onboarding through our platform. I would love to see a few of the same names, names join for that. In the meantime, uh, you can see right now the contact information for Doug and myself. Please feel free to request the deck or ask any questions uh, that you may have. We'd be more than happy to talk to you guys offline or answer questions via email. Thank you all for joining and I hope you all have a great day.